really like that little cinematic that I put together. Um, as you saw, I'm going to be showing you this item-based portal loader which I made. Um, it's very reliable and compact. Uh, I tried to make it as lag efficient as possible. Um, so it works by sending an item through a portal. Just turn it on here. So I've got this hopper clock which sends an item through the portal every 295 game ticks. Um, and then when an entity goes through a portal, uh, it loads a certain area for 300 game ticks. So it loads a 3x3 three three area um, of entity processing chunks, a 5x5 five five area of redstone processing, and 7x7 seven seven of non-ticking. But um, most cases, they just make use of the 3x3 three three area, because that pretty much loads everything. We have this one wide tileable return station, which is extremely compact, <laughs> dustless even, and this pretty much just picks up the item with this hopper minecart, cycles it back up here, just like that. Um, and then it uses an item elevator, as you saw in the cinematic, to send it back up here. Now, something that I didn't mention before, is that when the item gets shot up through here, it gets spat out just above the obsidian block. Now, you would think that this hopper minecart may actually pick that item back up again after it just got shot out, which would create an annoying cycle. Um, but instead what happens is, because this minecart is just situated on the rails and it's not like inside the obsidian block here, if you shoot out the item, in this case a salmon, um, in the middle of the block here, the hopper minecart actually can't reach it. So luckily in my case, the item goes up into this block, gets shot out of the dropper, goes up here, um, checks for any blocks around it, see if it can escape, goes up to the next block, um, oh, there's a pretty much an empty air block here, non-full block, and it moves into here, um, exiting out pretty much the center of the block. Uh, and it does that 100% of the time, I have not seen it come out like at the bottom here and get picked up by the minecart and break the cycle, um, it always comes out right here. So the item cycles back around here, similar system, minecart picks it up, stores it in this dropper, and then we have a Etho hopper clock, which is set to 295 game ticks of delay. Um, so it's got that 5 game tick buffer in case something weird happens. We've also got this little torch tower here. So you could just have one piece of dust here, um, but then it makes this loader locational because of update order. Sometimes um, the top dropper can power, got nothing in it, and then the bottom one powers, and then the item moves up into this dropper. Um, of course, as you just saw then, Oh, I just broke it, but if we get an item in here, so we have our salmon in there, um, you'll notice that the item won't get shot out, it'll actually get stuck in this dropper here. So that's because the top dropper updates and then the bottom one, so this would fire air, then that would fire the salmon into the top one, um, and then the salmon would get stuck. So to get around this problem, you can either build it in a different location, um, which of course isn't always an option, or you can just use a torch tower which may or may not add more lag, but it just, it makes it like infinitely more reliable really. So yeah, so I got around that problem. So you may have seen some other portal loaded designs out there, which use minecarts and send those through the portal. And the reason for that is because minecarts are hundred percent reliable. Um, and the reliability there is that if you send a minecart through a specific spot in the portal, it's guaranteed to exit the portal at that same location with the same velocity. Um, now the same goes for an item, but it doesn't, because every once in a while, um, the item can get shot out at a random point with a random velocity um, and screw screw everything up. So I've kind of mitigated this by just adding blocks on all sides of the portal, and then a hopper minecart just scanning below. So even if an item is ejected at random, it will just hit the edges, hit the sides of the portal, drop down, and then be collected by the minecart. So this makes the items 100% reliable as well. Um, and then let's drop an elevator here just shoots a block, shoots the item up into here, as you saw in the cinematic, and then it makes its way up into the portal. So by using an item entity instead of a minecart or a boat, um, it pretty much reduces the amount of steps that need to be taken to reliably send an item back and through a portal, as you only have to send an item through and then collect it again. So there's no need to break off a minecart or anything like that. Um, so this just makes the redstone a lot more compact, a lot simpler, just requires less resources to build and ultimately causes slightly less lag. And then, of course, the return circuit, as you saw in the cinematic again, um, is one wide tileable. Um, there's no actual use for one wide tileability, because it would only mean that you can have a portal in the overworld side, like eight blocks away. Um, but if it's eight blocks away, then it's not really going to be in another chunk. So there's no use to that. Um, you can have it three wide tileable, though. 
that does have some use, I guess, because you can load, you know, a uh, three by four area of trunks either side, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just I designed this one for a end core another tree farm that I'm working on. So I needed a specific portal loader that's really lag friendly, uses like the least amount of resources possible, because the end core design is, is rather massive that I'm making, and and lag is going to be an issue. So. I just designed this one which fits all the criteria that I'm looking for and it might hopefully meet your criteria too. Overall there's, there's very little to improve with portal loaders like a very basic kind of contraption and because it's so simple I'm going to be doing a quick block by block tutorial in case you need a helping hand when working on stuff like this. So these are all the items that you're going to need and start by just building a couple blocks off the ground. This is where you're going to construct your portal. Um, so you want a solid block there, build up like this. If you want, you can fill in your corners. I like to get rid of them and then put some spawn proof blocks on top just to, you know, spawn proof it. Uh, then get out your droppers, a minecart, hopper like that. I'm going to start placing these down. So there's your two droppers, then a hopper. Then you put like a slab down, two rails like that, another solar block, and then a lever. And we're facing in that way. Um, then we're going to come over to here and we're going to have a torch pointing into the block and a torch on the other side. It's going to click like that which is pretty cool. And we're going to start building up the hopper clock. So we're going to have two hoppers facing into each other. Uh, we can chuck our balls into them like so. We're going to add a comparator with some dust. Then we're going to come over here and get our sticky piston, block of redstone, and then a piston facing back in, like so. And now we want to get our, oh, there we go, get some gloss. We want to kind of cover up this side here. Um, also, you want to light your portal about now. Cover up the other side. And then this is the other important part. So you want to kind of fill in the area just around this dropper. So like I'm doing here, chuck in a minecart while you're at it just to make sure that the item is going to get sent through up these blocks and into the portal. Um, if you leave this block exposed and you chuck a concrete in there, um, it can get spat out the side, so that's not what you want. I like to fill in the corners at work as well. I don't think it has any effect as items can't really get shot out this corner here. Um, just kind of makes it smooth and possibly increases reliability, but I'm almost 100% certain that items can't get ejected out these corners. So that is pretty much the overworld side of things. Um, of course you could build this side in the nether and the one wide tileable return circuit in the overworld. It just depends you know, on preference, what side you're going to be activating it from, all that stuff. Um, if you want to toggle this on and off you can just add a torch there and then that can hard power the piston there which disables the clock. Um, and then you can just you know, turn the torch off like that, which also turns the rails on, which starts the whole the whole farm back up. Um, at this point, you can also chuck in any old item, put in some concrete. Okay, so now we're going to build up the return side of the portal loader. So we're going to start by properly linking up our nether portal with the other side. So to do that, you just simply look at the portal block, um, you grab up F3, and you look at these coordinates over to your right. So we have minus 10. And you just want to divide each um, coordinate by 8. So don't worry about the middle one, that's the Y coordinate, that's the height. That doesn't matter unless you're going above Y127. In that case, it will link to portals that are created above the bedrock roof in the nether. So minus 10, just want to divide that by 8, we get minus 1.25. And you want to always round down to the nearest integer. So we're going to put minus 1 into chat. Um, we also have 358. So 358, divide that by 8. We get 44.75. Now, normally you would round that to 45, but the game likes to round down to the next integer. Oh, it's just a little thing that it does. So we're actually just going to type in 358. Um, no, we're not going to type that. We're going to type in 44, sorry. Oh, it's a little mind blank then. So we have our coordinates, minus 1 and 44. We're going to jump through the portal, um, and we can see that it has actually gone to minus 1 and 44, which is very nice of it. Now, it doesn't always do that. I can sometimes link up to other portals um, that are in the area. So there's a lot of items on the floor for some reason. That definitely has nothing to do with those command blocks up there. Anyway, so you can see the portal has kindly linked to the coordinates that we wanted, but that doesn't matter because it has generated 
on the bottom of the world, so we have to go up a couple blocks so we have space to build the logic. So you have your portal, um, you can light it right now if you want to, put items around it, like put glass around it like that, spawn proof the top, and then similarly to what we did before, we're just going to place some concrete, get two droppers going up like that, copper, slab, and then you can just have a lever attached to the obsidian like that, or the block, doesn't matter. And then I'm going to take a signal out the back using a comparator, pump that signal through the trapdoor, and the observer can detect that, which will power the bottom dropper and then the top one. But if we were to chuck an item in there, the item would then get ejected off to the side. So we want to kind of encase these blocks. Um, in this case, I'm using glass, just like that. And now the item will get sent through the portal 100% of the time. Um, if you're worried about gas fireballs breaking, you can always build this out of some high strength material. Um, but I'm just going to settle for glass at the moment because it looks good on a camera. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the the uh, the portal loader. So as you can see, it actually linked up to that one, which is interesting. So we go back through here. Go through here again. There we go. So now it's properly linked up, and we can see if, a, if an item's in here. So we have a redstone torch. Torch gets chucked out, and you'll notice it should get sent back like that. So now we know that the nether side's loaded, this side's loaded, um, and you can just kind of let it sit. And yeah, you remember how to turn it on and off. You just have this lever that toggles the whole thing. Uh, if you want to get fancy, you can maybe attach an activator rail somewhere and turn off the copper minecart that would also cause some idle lag so yeah that is the portal loader that i've designed um i really hope you liked the video um this is officially the most work i've ever put into a video <laughs> takes like three hours to film this little part and then the cinematic which is actually the little part only 40 seconds takes like 40 hours to film so i'm probably never going to do that again um even though it is cool and i did learn quite a lot from doing it but yeah hope you guys all enjoy the video thanks so much for watching um, if you want to see me do some more stuff with portals, just click here.